So I just got a new motherboard in, guys. It is the X9 DRD LF. Um, so like I said in an earlier video, um, this is kind of the like kind of little brother to the X9 DRD series. There's a bunch of other boards um, kind of based off that platform. So I actually have an X9 DRD IF, um, which is a very similar board, exact same layout except for this board as you could probably tell is a very slim down version um, we kind of have just our basic dual core 2011 uh, v1 v2 uh, cpu sockets uh, we just have one pci 16x slot and this should be tied to a cpu 2 over here so that so you i'm assuming that you'll probably have to have two processors populated um, to get this the PCI slot working as you can tell um, the other four uh, 8x slots are missing um, you know you, you do have basic video out um, two um, gigabit NICs uh, a USB and the IPMI uh, interface as well uh, it only has one USB header um, I don't know if these are active. I actually just took the board out, but I, um, when I powered it up for the first time, I'm going to probe it with a uh, multimeter and see if they're getting any power. It looks like there are maybe some resistors or uh, similar SMD type components that are missing, so I don't know if those need to be populated as well. Um, I noticed some of the, the fan headers for the front, they're missing. Um, unlike some of the X9... DRD boards, you only have two uh, SATA 3 ports instead of the additional eight SATA 2 ports. Um, so you can, you know, at least you can do some boot drives there, uh, but you're not going to be able to connect a lot of other stuff. Um, I do plan on uh, connecting a SAS controller to that, so um, that should alleviate any of that. You know, if you use an expander or um, kind of like a backplane with a built in expander, you can. Uh, connect you know the as many boards as you or drives as you want as long as you have the right uh, connectors I'm um, kind of just going over the board there's lots of other components missing looks like there's you know probably some capacitors that go here to uh, populate these slots uh, I know on this on the x9 DRD IF and probably some of the other ones that's actually a uh, serial port um, so looks like that's missing um, I do plan on, you know, again, like trying to solder in some of these. They're pretty easy to solder. Uh, I have some of these pin style things that I use to um, add add headers to like a Raspberry Pi, and you kind of just heat up the backside, and you're able to um, push them through. So I might try try some of that. Um, I notice like the intrusion headers missing. Um, but you know, if you're just wanting to build like a basic Unraid server, or even like a Plex server or something. And you don't need a uh, video out. I think this is a good basic server board. Um, you know, it uh, supports, you know, dual 2011 uh, CPUs. And, you know, you can get some of those for pretty cheap. Or even some of the higher end ones. I'm, you know, I know they can still be a little expensive. But, you know, still a pretty viable platform. Um, you know, I have 64 gigs of RAM on the way uh, to, to populate in here. And I'm going to throw in some, I just, right now I just have some some spare uh, 2609s. I mean, there were. I think I paid less than five bucks for both of those, just to kind of get the board up and running. And then I think I want to put some better processors uh, in my main rig uh, once you know the prices come down a little bit, which I think they should um, next year, kind of as the new architectures uh, starts to come out. I know AMD has some good stuff that should make the Intel stuff a little more uh, competitive. Um, but yeah, you know, it seems like a good board. I paid. I think I paid fifty bucks shipped for it. Uh, on eBay, uh, you know, as a best offer, asking sixty, um, you know, and then uh, I bought an IO shield on from China, so that should probably be here in about uh, a few weeks uh, for like five bucks. So you know, for fifty-five bucks, not a bad board. Uh, I think I'm gonna throw this maybe in a one U case, uh, super micro, or one of the um, cheaper two U cases uh, that at least has some either four or eight hot swappable bays. Um, if it's a 1U case, it'll probably be pretty toasty, so uh, I'll probably put this one out in the garage. Um, looks like the little USB uh, onboard port's missing. Um, you know, again, I don't know if that's, uh, you know, still works, just the, the header's missing. 
Um, but, you know, it looks like other than that, plenty of options. I'll just do one quick kind of pan over real quick that you get a good look at it. But, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. If anyone plans on doing a build on this board, I'd really appreciate kind of what your thoughts are and, you know, what you're using to build with it. Um, you know, a really good deal for, you know, a 2011, um, you know, motherboard. I know they can be pretty expensive, but, um, you know, if you're just wanting to build a basic server and, you know, it's not going to be limited on CPUs, so you could still build a pretty, you know, a pretty decent system for an affordable price and, you know, throw some, some RAM in there. But, uh, yeah, I, you know, I didn't really find a ton of information on this board on, you know, e like, uh, YouTube or, uh, Reddit. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, I'm going to power this thing up, probably throw in the processors and uh, get the BIOS updated and uh, log into the IPMI. I'm guessing it's pretty similar to the IF version, just like I said, missing some components because if you actually like uh, view the manual for these boards, they're, uh, they just share a manual and it kind of just has like, you know, asterisks where, uh, you know, some items might only be included on the IF version. But you know, for 50 bucks, I paid, you know, half as much as the IF version. It seems like a cool board, and uh, looking forward to the build, and I'll definitely uh, share more details as I find out.